It's me again, once again. Sincere thanks for your time. Today, I'd like to embark on a new topic, which is analog to digital conversion, which is also known as ADC. For this video, I'm going to show it to you how sampling and also the numbers of bits will affect the ADC. So this video, the objective is to have an overview of the operation of ADC. This will be the part one series discussion on ADC. Stay tuned over here to receive more discussion on ADC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Firstly, let's discuss what is analog to digital conversion or maybe why we need to have this analog to digital conversion. In most applications, signal which are to be transmit exist in analog form. For example, our speech or maybe the voice that I'm talking to you now, they actually exist in analog form. And also the video, for example, you see this in a YouTube, the video basically also may exist in a analog form. Okay, so this is what it means. So the transmitter actually send this analog signal, for example, my voice over to the receiver. To be compatible with a digital system, the analog signal must be converted to a digital signal through a process known as analog to digital conversion. Okay, as we know, we move into the era of digitalization. So instead of sending analog waveform, we actually send digital signal. So when we actually send a digital signal, we must have a way to convert our original source of information which is analog in certain format to a digital signal before we can send the signal over the air to the receiver. So this is the role of ADC. In short, ADC convert the original signal, which is analog to a digital format so that it is suitable to send over to the receiver as we move into the digital era. The three steps of ADC, okay, the first step is basically sample. How we can sample the analog signal at a regular interval. Okay, for example, TS, okay, so this TS, which is the time of sampling, the output, they are all short duration pulse. Okay, with amplitude equals to the analog signal amplitude. Let's not so do well so much on the technical aspect. Let's just take that the first step of ADC is sampling. Okay, how many samples that we need to do before we can successfully convert the analog signal to a digital signal. So this is the first step of ADC, sampling. Second is quantization. The PAM signal is then quantized to the nearest level, okay, which means that they basically move to a nearest level. For example, in my house, there are two bus stops that is near to my house. One is much, much nearer to my house. Another one is slightly further away from my house. So therefore, because of this, I actually, most of the time, I actually want to go to the nearest bus stop because this is much more convenient for me. So imagine this is what I mean by quantize. Again, okay, I will discuss this on the next few video. Maybe for this video, I just want to let you realize the crucial of sampling and also the number of bit. The more detail, whether is it quantize or encode, Okay, I will discuss with you on the next video. Sampling. Okay, so this is the first thing that I want to discuss. How many sampling I need for experiment, for example. An analog signal is continuous in time. Okay, so this is an analog signal. Okay, you can see that they are all continuous in time, which means that they are all joined up. And it is necessary to convert this to a flow of digital value. Okay, so there's a big request from the digitalization waveform to convert this analog signal into a digital one. Okay, so how can we do this? The first step is to do the sampling. Hence, it is therefore required to define the rate at 
which new digital values are sampled from the analog signal. Okay, again, this is the analog signal. Okay, so this is the number of sample that we are going to take on the analog signal. Okay, you can see from here, we fit in the original analog signal. We also fit in the sampling. So this tells us exactly how many sample that I want to conduct on this analog signal. Let's take a quick look on this sampling pulse. Okay, this TS here basically is the interval between the pulse. You can see here, so this is the first pulse. This is the second pulse. TS actually indicate the time that is in between the two pulse. So this is what it means. TS is actually the sampling intervals. We can also find the sampling frequency by doing one over TS. So one over TS will be able to tell our sampling rate or sampling frequency. For example, when the TS is equals to one millisecond, okay, which means that these two pulse are separate by one millisecond, we can conclude that the sampling frequency is one kilohertz, which means that I'm going to sample 1000 times in one second. Okay, so this is the meaning of sampling rate or sampling frequency. Okay, so hopefully now you understand. So this actually tells us how many sampling that we want to conduct for this analog signal. Let me give you an example. For example, this is the analog signal that I want to send it over to the receiver. So this video, I'm going to discuss ADC, which means that I convert the analog signal to a digital signal. And then after that, I'm going to discuss about DAC, which means that I receive the digital signal. I actually convert them into analog. And we're going to have a discussion if the waveform is acceptable and all. Okay, for example, this is the analog signal that I want to send over to the receiver. Let's say I'm going to do two sample. Okay, so these are the two sample that I conduct on this analog signal. Again, you can see from here, I actually convert the analog signal to a digital signal. Okay, so this is firstly in rule one, they are continuous. So I actually done a two sample. So basically what I do is basically I've done this ADC. So from analog signal, I convert them into digital signal. Let's not do well so much how I actually encode the numbers of the so-called the, the level. Okay, for this video, I'm going to illustrate in terms of sampling first. Okay, so I'm going to do two sample on this analog signal. So next, I send over this digital signal over and I receive this digital signal. I'm going to show it to you the DAC. This is a digital signal. So how can I convert them into analog? I just follow the envelope of the digital signal from here, you can see. So this is basically the conversion from digital to analog. Okay, so this red one is the one that I convert from the digital format. And what happened here is, this is the original, the blue color is the original signal that I want to send over. And the red color is the conversion from digital to analog. So I put them together, okay, you can see that there are lots of mismatch between these two waveforms. Hence, this is so-called not acceptable okay, because the difference between the original signal to and then versus the recover digital to analog converter, okay, they are too much difference. So this is unacceptable. So this is the sampling that done at two times, for example. Next, okay, I'm going to show it to you if I can increase my sampling rate. Okay, so again, this is the original analog signal. So now instead of two times, I sampled it many, many times. You can see from here, there are many samples that I conduct for this analog signal. Again, I basically convert the analog signal to a digital format. Again, let's not do well so much on how I encoded the bits. Okay, but like what I illustrated earlier on, this discussion mainly focus on sampling. Okay, so firstly, I successfully convert from analog to digital. So this is a digital signal that I send over to the receiver. So when I actually receive the digital signal, again, the key thing is I'm going to do the DAC. How can I convert the digital signal to the analog signal? So I receive this. Again, I trace all the envelope of the signal. Okay, so this red one is the one that I trace back from the digital signal versus the original signal. Okay, you can see from here, okay, this is quite 
highly almost match in term of the original signal versus the digital converted to the analog signal. So with this, we can conclude that the more sample that I take, okay, the closer the result signal will be able to achieve versus the original signal. So, but what happened here is basically we can't take infinite sample. Can you imagine? Can we take infinite sample over here and this thing look exactly the same? Then it's perfect. However, in a practical sense, okay, we, we can't talk about infinite. Okay, for example, I ask you to do one million sample for experiment. Okay, you will feel that it's a lot of redundancy because it's too much. So for this video, I'm going to discuss how to determine the sampling. How many is considered enough for the sampling? Like what I mentioned, in the practical aspect, okay, we cannot have infinite numbers of sample or a very large sample, which means the experiment we done. Okay, so I'm going to discuss with you how many sample is enough to do for this experiment. An ADC work by sampling the value of the input at discrete intervals in time. Provide that the input is sampled above the Nyquist rate. Okay, which means that if I do a sample above this Nyquist rate, defined as twice the highest frequency of interest, then all frequency in the signal can be reconstructed. Okay, which means that earlier on, I have shown you two examples. One, I basically sample at two times. Okay, when I sample at two times, this is definitely way, way below the Nyquist rate. Therefore, from there, you can conclude that I'm not able to recover back the original signal. However, if we do sampling above the Nyquist rate, okay, which means that I'm actually conduct twice the highest frequency of interest, then we are able to recover back the original signal. Hence, for sampling frequency, it is highly recommend that you do two times more than the highest frequency. If you do two times more than the highest frequency, Okay, I can more or less guarantee that the signal can be reconstructed in a reasonable format. However, if we do something less than 2fmax, aliasing error will occur. So first, in terms of sampling rate, we need to sample at least two times the highest frequency. If we do two times highest, two times of the highest frequency, we can conclude that we can recover back the original signal. If we do something less than the Nyquist rate or two times the highest frequency, aliasing error will occur and we will not be able to recover back the original signal. Okay, so this is the first discussion on sampling. Next, okay, we're going to talk about quantize. Okay, let's not dwell so much on the technical term of quantize. So over this video, I'm going to show it to you how many numbers of bits is enough to represent an analog signal. So the numbers of bits that is used to represent the amplitude of the sample signal. Okay, so this is the numbers of bits okay, that is so-called to represent, sufficiently to represent the analog signal. Okay, for example, the ADC encode the sample signal using three bits. Okay, we're using three bits. Hence, it is called a three bits ADC. Okay, so if we have a three bits ADC, okay, hence the N will be equal to three. Numbers of quantized level L. After ADC, the amplitude of the sample signal is not longer continuous. Early on, you see that when I actually do a sampling, okay, you can see that the outcome is not longer continuous. In short, it is not longer analog. It becomes a digital signal. It is quantized into discrete level L equals to 2N. Okay, so this video, let's not so much concerned about all this quantization level or in terms of how I actually encode the bit, what I want to do in this video is to represent the analog signal using the numbers of bit. I'm going to show you again two extreme cases. One definitely under the numbers of bit, which means that the numbers of bit is not sufficient to represent the analog signal. Next, I will share with you in terms of n is equal to 3. Okay, in terms of n into 3 to represent the analog signal. Okay, from here you can conclude that which is much better to represent. Again, instead of by words, let me give you an example. Okay, this is the same 
original analog signal that I want to send over to the receiver. Again, this effort here, we are going to discuss how many numbers of bits. For this particular case, I just want to use, for example, two level or n equals to one in terms of the numbers of bits to represent the analog signal. Okay, so this is the thing. So from here, again, I need to do sampling. So I do a sampling on this data here. Here you can see that there is an imaginary line. Any point that is lower than this imaginary line, okay, I will use a zero to represent the data. Anything that is above the imaginary line, okay, I will use this one to represent the data. In short, there are only two levels, either zero or one. If it's below the imaginary line, I will use zero to represent it. If it's above the imaginary line, okay, I will use one to represent it. So in short, okay, basically, this is the outcome. Okay, so everything that is lower than this imaginary line, okay, from here you can see that these four dots here, okay, represent less than the imaginary line. After that, I have another four dots, okay, that is one, two, three, four, that is higher than the imaginary line. Therefore, I use a big one to represent it. Okay, after that, everything are all lower than the imaginary line. Okay, so basically this is the waveform. Okay, so you can see from here, this is the waveform that I sent over from the transmitter to the receiver. So when the receiver receives this waveform, again, what they do is basically they trace. Okay, and then this is the outcome. Okay, so from here, I can recover back the original analog signal by converting the digital signal into analog format. And again, from here, you compare the red versus the blue Okay, you can find out that this is actually not sufficient. Okay, which means that I cannot clearly duplicate back the original signal. So this is the issue when I actually have just two level to represent the analog signal. So next, okay, again, this is the same signal that I want to send over okay, in a digital format. So I'm going to show it to you how can we do this ADC. Okay, so instead of two, now I use eight. 8 level or 2 to the power 3, n equals to 3, 3 bits ADC to send over the analog signal to the receiver. Okay, again, from here, you can see that this is the analog signal. I do a sample. So after I do a sample, okay, I actually put them into the different level, okay, which is called a um, quantize. Okay, again, like what I mentioned, I mean, let's not dwell so much on the term of quantize. So this is basically the digital signal that I sent over to the receiver. So when I actually receive the signal, okay, I actually trace back the original signal. So basically this is what we call a DAC. I have the digital signal, I recover back the analog signal. So from here, okay, you can see that this is the one that I recover from the digital signal versus the original signal. Okay, from here, I can conclude that this is more or less acceptable. So from this example, okay, you can see that if I can have infinite numbers of bits to represent the analog signal, okay, the closer it will be resembled against the original signal. In short, in this video, I have discussed firstly, sampling, how many samples to take in order to sufficiently represent the analog signal. Next, I also talk about the numbers of bits. For example, for this case here, if we can increase the numbers of bits, then we can be more confident to represent back the original signal as illustrated here. Earlier on, I have shown it to you. For example, okay, I just have only two levels to represent the analog signal. But for this case here, I have eight levels to represent the analog signal. And basically from here, I can conclude that the numbers of bits, the more the merrier, then the more the more closer resemble will be versus the original signal. With this, I like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you.